Hey folks, welcome back. Well, a few weeks ago, I did a video with uh, this Ford F-250, or F-350, 1999, and um, with a 7.3 power stroke, it had a low oil pressure uh, supply problem, you know. Um, it, it was fine when it was cold, it would run, you'd kind of hear a little bit of a knocking sound or whatever, but other than that, it ran uh, once it warmed up it got to, uh, to the point where, you know, if you're driving down the road, you know, 25, 30 PSI at like, you know, 1800 RPM, give or take, uh, but you, you slow down, let it idle, like the stop and go sign or whatever, it would, the oil pressure drop down below uh, almost to nothing, basically. And then if you let it idle long enough, it'd start running like crap because it's basically running out of oil for the uh, high pressure oil system to run the injectors. And so now we got the engine, um, we basically, you know, from, check out that last video, but we pretty much assumed that, uh, you know, we had a problem internally the engine because um, we did try a new uh, low pressure oil pump, you know, the one back behind the uh, harmonic balancer here, tried um, check valves and all that kind of stuff in the uh, oil cooler area where the filter mounts up to, and none of that uh, made any difference um, because of the knocking sound and pretty much assumed that we had something going on. I did end up finding, uh, in, in one point in draining the oil, a little piece of metal or something like that, which to me looked like a bearing of some kind. So we thought maybe, you know, rod bearing or something like that. But anyways, now I have got this thing out, the oil pan off, and I will show you what actually happened. Okay, so this is what also was in the bottom of the oil pan here. Um, this is a cam bearing. This is part of a cam bearing. This is one of the piston jets. So I don't know what light is going to be the best to use. Uh, but if you look down in there, hopefully you can see that's a good piston jet right there. So that's what um, takes oil pressure and, and loops it up and, and, you know, sprays it underneath of the piston. Um, the, where it's missing at is on this cylinder right here, uh, which is cylinder number eight, because it's on the uh, driver's side. And so, um, but the main thing here is, and I don't know how well we're gonna be able to see it, might have to try a different light, but there's a cam bearing that has walked out of its spot. There we are right there. See where it says that 1.99? Um, that is a cam bearing that has walked to the left, you know, and you could see the lobe is actually right now in the position where it would be pushing up on the lifter and part of that cam bearing has broken. Um, and then if you look in this part right here, which I don't know if the camera, to me it doesn't look like there's a cam bearing in there at all. That could be the one, this one here, and then this could be the piece of the other cam bearing that is walked out right there. And possibly the cam bearing, you know, obviously, Here's the other side of that deal, which is, I mean, it's really hard to see. Um, what I'm going to probably do is rotate this engine around and see if we could uh, get a better shot of any of this. And um, to kind of show, but basically what has happened, you know, here's a good shot of a, of a piston, you know, one of the jets right there. See that little... Uh, 10 millimeter bolt, 10 millimeter headed bolt right there. You know, that's what, and so like this piston right here is all the way down. And so, you know, that cam bearing could have gotten wedged in between there. The piston came up. You can see the part of the skirt right here that um, it could have just, you know, broke that jet off of there. And because, you know, like this cam bearing here that's that's walked out, this one over here that's completely out, um, I don't know if I could, I can see it 
in there, but I can see the cam bearing in on that, that journal there. Um, you know, cause there's a cam bearing in every part here, you know, especially on the ends, but there's cam bearings here, 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 and here. And it looks to me like the one here is completely gone. This one is walked out. Oh wait, no, this one's the one that's walked out. This one is completely gone. Um, so basically what happens there is, is uh, you got too much of a gap in too many places um, that there's, this thing can't build the proper oil pressure because there's just, you know, there's, there's too much clearance in there and and that's what's going on there as far as uh this whole bottom end of the engine pistons and all that stuff like that it's probably all okay um i think this engine uh this pickup has about a hundred and ninety thousand miles on it or something like that so the bottom end of this engine everything here is probably okay um as far as that goes i don't see any signs of any bearing problems here as far as the cause of how these cam bearings walked out i have no clue um how that happened i don't do enough engine rebuilding or anything like that i hardly do any of it uh to to know how that um happened or what caused that to happen um you know whether the camshaft is could be possibly bent or or something i don't know um but Long and short of it, this engine's gonna have to get tore down enough to get this, uh, to replace this cam and all of the bearings. Not exactly sure how far we're gonna go with rebuilding this engine, because um, this engine now is going to, you know, get fixed and everything, and then I'm gonna put it in an older vehicle. Um, I think an old Suburban 94 or something like that. I'm not sure what I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do, but, um, just thought I would uh, share this a little bit, and I'm going to see if I can get some better shots um, by rolling this engine around and see what other stuff we could see. Um, you know, but here's another good shot of one of those jets on that piston, which that piston's all the way down as well. Um, so, yeah, see what happens. Uh, there's a little bit better shot of where the broken jet came from. Um, which I said was, uh, yeah, cylinder number eight. So it's supposed to be connected there. So that could be replaced. A um, <clears throat> little somewhat different of a view of that, but not, not completely. Get my camera focused. Sorry, folks. It's really hard to get in there. All right, there's somewhat of a better uh, picture of that uh, cam bearing. Oh, these LEDs are so bright. Um, that's one that's walked out. You can see that the <clears throat> cam lobe is actually right up. Um, it may not be hard to see, but where that uh, like squiggly line where the you know where the two pieces of the bearing come together cam lobe is right there and uh yeah see if i can get a better i don't know really hard to get a good shot in there um well that's about about the best shot i can i can give um it's just really it's very difficult to uh get good picture you know to i can't see as good through the camera as i can you know just looking at this thing <clears throat> um so anyways yeah this engine is going to be uh have to be torn down and get fixed but um probably not going to need to rebuild the whole whole entire thing i don't know yet what i'm going to do um i don't think so um because it's got i mean i had done a compression test on it in the past it's got really good compression it uh you know like i said it runs but it's not going to work like that so um we'll probably have it in a 
in the future um, to getting it because this is this will be the engine right here that you know that I want to get all of the parts for and hook up here and run on this uh, engine stand that I got here um, so that we can have it completely running and stand alone right here on the engine stand before we put it in to the uh, older vehicle that we're going to put it in and you know I'll just bring you along with all that kind of stuff as it comes up um, so anyways this was just a update of you know what we finally found wrong with this engine um, as part two of the other video and so thanks for watching